Hey friend, I'm pretty sure I know what you're looking for, or at least what you need. You probably recently learned about something called parental alienation and it's happening to you. And my friend, my heart goes out to you. So you might be in the court system fighting to see your child. You're also a single parent working long hours and you're just desperately trying to find anything to help you with the situation with your child so that it doesn't get worse. And that's nothing to speak of the emotional issues that you're facing right now. So what you're really looking for is help and you don't have a lot of time to get that help. So with time being your most precious commodity right now, having someone else read books on parental alienation would be really helpful. Bottom line is I'm gonna be reading and reviewing books on parental alienation so that I can help both of us out and so that you can find the most promising books for your needs. Damn. Uh. So welcome to my book club where I'm going to be reading and reviewing books on parental alienation and then I'm going to bring you the education and resources that you need to be able to face and navigate this difficult situation. Today we're going to be reviewing the book called Overcoming the Co-Parenting Trap. This book has actually changed my perspective somewhat on parental alienation and so we're going to get into that. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a summary of the book as well as some key takeaways that changed my perspective on parental alienation. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video guys because I'm going to be sharing with you my conclusion obviously of the book but I'm also going to be sharing with you a really valuable tool that you can use with your alienated child that you're not going to want to miss. So when I first read the title of the book, I have to admit that I wasn't sure I was going to like the book because it made it sound like both parents are responsible for the alienation. And after reading the book, I still firmly believe that the alienating parent is responsible for the alienation of the child. But I did have a shift in my perspective on the role that the targeted parent could play. There are things that the targeted parent can do to help the situation, and there are things that the targeted parent can do that can hurt the situation. Often, sadly, the targeted parent falls prey to the behaviors of the alienating parent and can unknowingly cause further damage by reacting in various ways to the alienation. So here's the thing. This book has a ton of value packed into a really small package. So it's really worth having this within arm's reach for the constant stream of difficulties that we find ourselves in. So here's a direct quote from the book. One of our goals is to help parents appreciate that the issue is not an either or situation, either that the resisted parent deserves it or that the preferred parent alienated the child. Rather, it is likely a both and situation, one in which complex forces are at work, unfortunate behavior has occurred, and unfortunate impacts have resulted. It goes on to say, arrival at a definitive conclusion about who did what to whom is not only unattainable, but unnecessary to getting the family unstuck from the conflict trap. What I think the author is trying to do is open the eyes of the alienated parent so that they take a more holistic perspective of their situation because family courts are seeing cases of all types, not just parental alienation. So the author focuses on the idea with all of these different types of cases that there's a family conflict trap, which basically is saying that everyone plays a role and everyone plays a role in making the situation better and everyone plays a role in making the situation worse. Okay, so I'm gonna interject with my own opinion here. Here's the thing. There is no question in my mind that many of us have arrived here at this point because the other parent engaged in awful behavior and sometimes abusive behavior. And were it not for that behavior happening, our child would not be alienated from us. The problem is that the courts, the reunification therapists, the judges, the guardians, the commissioners, the custody evaluators, they hardly take more than a glance at the alienator's behaviors because they don't have very good tools to deal with people who present with these issues and cause these types of problems in families. So what they're expecting is that the targeted parent is gonna have to do a lot of work to fix the problem, regardless of who's at fault. Some of us may be able to figure this out and some may not, but it's still worth it for all of us to have more tools in our tool case to deal with the problem of parental alienation. So I gotta make mention here that the book does talk about abuse and neglect being one of the reasons that a child may reject a parent. As a reminder, if there is abuse or neglect, 
present, it cannot be considered parental alienation. So the greatest value that I attained from this book was that the author had a really great section for the alienated parent. And throughout every single chapter of the book, the author provided different tools for the alienated parent to learn and how to deal with the difficult situations. One really great example of this is that when the child starts to express negative emotions towards the alienated parent, the author warns heavily against the alienated parent dismissing those feelings or even starting to blame them on the alienating parent. Instead, what they recommend is to say something like, I get it that you are really angry and disappointed in me. I want to respect those feelings and still try to make the best of our time together. I don't agree with much of what you were saying, but we probably can't talk through that at this point. This book gave me the feeling of being more empowered as I face all of the ugly, alienating situations that arise. In addition to having a section for the rejected parent, it also has a section for the alienating parent, as if they would read it. But you know, at least it addresses it. And it addresses all the things that as targeted parents wish the alienating parent knew. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you three things that I liked and three things that I didn't like about the book. So what I like most about the book is it's 78 pages. So it's a really quick read. And the other thing that I feel like is probably the most powerful thing about this book is that it provides great practical advice and also a lot of little parenting tips inside each of the chapters that would really be a lot of help for alienated parents to help reduce or even offset a lot of the alienating behaviors that are happening. And the third thing is that the author does kind of a really good job of validating the targeted parent. And so they talk about the intractable problem that the targeted parent faces and that normal parenting skills do not work. So the resisted parent is really going to have to elevate their parenting skills. And then they provide tips and solutions for the targeted parent as they are dealing with those difficult situations. For example, when the resisted parent is stung with hurt, they may feel the urge to counter reject the child by saying something like, it's obvious that you don't want to see me. I don't want to see you unless you want to see me. So let me know when you want some time with me. The author clearly states that saying this to your child is a huge mistake, so don't make it. Instead, continue to show your love to your child regardless of what happens. Okay, so now for three things that I dislike about this book. The first thing is, is that I feel like the author is muddying the waters because they're including abuse and neglect in the holistic perspective of why a child rejects a parent. And for me, I feel like that deserves its own book because there is absolutely no comparison on how you would treat a situation with a child who's been abused or neglected as you would a child who's been through some other things. So I feel like that should be removed. And the second thing that I really dislike about this book is that the author says that unfortunate behaviors occurred and that the results are that there are unfortunate outcomes. Like I just have to roll my eyes on that one because you would never say to a child who's been abused that the actions were unfortunate. No, they're abusive. Let's call it what it is. We would never say that an alienating parent's behaviors are unfortunate. They would be called abusive because indeed a lot of us alienated parents did in fact suffer abusive actions from the alienating parent. And it's incredibly minimizing to both the alienated parent as well as the alienated child to call it unfortunate instead of calling it what it is. It's abuse. And the other thing is, is that there's no possible way you can get to the same treatment if you're just going to call it unfortunate. No, the treatment for unfortunate behaviors is over here and the treatment for abusive behaviors is over here. So I do have to mention that at the beginning of the book, the authors did mention that they did everything they could to not be working with parents who actually did engage in abuse. However, I still feel like the authors just should not have included abuse and neglect as a reason in this book for the child rejecting the parent. Okay, so for the third thing that I really did not like about this is that at some point the author did recommend that the rejected parent should inform the alienating parent of discipline that they implement in their home. And I would 
have to strongly disagree with that. Coming from a situation that I did, providing that kind of information to someone who is narcissistically abusive is not a good idea. Now, that's like giving them the ammunition to shoot you with. So this book is going to be one of my go-to books to help with those difficult situations that alienated parents face. And I highly recommend this book to alienated parents and also to any parent going through a high conflict divorce. As fellow targeted parents, it's really important that we understand how to effectively deal with difficult situations with our alienated children so that you can preserve any kind of loving relationship with them. And if you remember earlier in this video, I promised you that I was going to be sharing with you a really useful parenting tool that you can use in your own reunification situation. So here it goes. So during my reunification experience, one of the things that I found to be the most difficult is what to do when things aren't going well. After all, some of us parents haven't seen our children in years. There's going to be emotions on both sides and oftentimes those children are very standoffish. While we want to have as much time with our child as possible, what we really want is to have that time with them to be the best it possibly can be. So if emotions are running high and you are unable to get things to calm down to a good level, then it very well may be the best thing for you to amicably end the parent time early. But if you do choose this option, just make sure that you're clear with your child that you really want to spend that time with them and that it's not always going to end early. You could say something to them like, we seem to be struggling today and I would really prefer for you to have a good experience with me. So although I would like to see you, it may be better to end early and try again tomorrow. Okay friend, if you found value in this video, will you please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that when I put a new video out, you will get notified.